All right. I think we're live now, Sylvan. Welcome again. So nice to be together this morning or evening for you. Oh, thank you so much. It's a massive honor. Great. It's nice, nice to... to hang out with you for a bit. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, we <laughs> love doing that, don't we? So um, wonderful to be together, Sylvan. And before we dive in there, just uh, everybody on Facebook, if you want to give us a thumbs up, if you can hear us well, if you can see us well, just so that we know everything's working. And also, we always love to read where you're calling or dialing in or clicking in from. So uh, let us know in the comment box and also really use the comment box. I have the feed open here and can ask Sylvan who will be with me today to share about his experience uh, in the next 30 to 40 minutes and any questions that you'd like to ask. I can also see how we can integrate some of them at least asking Sylvan here directly. So use that comment section below and we'll make this as customized as possible to really share about things that you really care about and that matter to you. So Oslo, I see some Germany, Stockholm, great. Um, many hearts, Sylvan, people are happy <laughs> to see you. Uh, um. So we, we had a, an email, I think many Many of you may have received this email um, this week where I shared a bit about my own background of having had different practices. And uh, so basically sharing about what has worked and what hasn't worked for me in my life. And uh, also then to really share about how the balanced view training filled in the gaps that I had felt like all the incompletenesses and gaps that I've had in my <clears throat> in my practices um, and, and, and how that worked for me. So today we wanted to speak together, Sylvan and I, so that he could also share his experience and share about his completion of the gaps. And it will be really exciting to hear from you. I've spent many hours uh, with Sylvan <laughs> speaking about topics like this. So it, it just feels like sitting in our living rooms, which I guess we both do actually. So just not in the same living room. Uh, Sylvan, so good to see you again. Thank you for joining. And why don't we start with the very early beginnings for you? How did you meet Candice? What did your world look like at the time? What were you looking for, if anything? How did that all start for you? Yeah, thank you. It's so nice to be here. And, and uh, yeah, I'm honored always to, to be involved in anything related to this teaching. And um, yeah, so I, I met Candice through pure chance, really, uh, just over 10 years ago. Uh, I'd gone to India for the first time and stayed there for six months and um, had uh, a few places that I planned to visit for different reasons. And um, the only place I hadn't planned on visiting was Rishikesh, which, uh, which is where I ended up for the last month. <laughs> and um yeah one day uh somebody sitting next to me in a restaurant was talking about Candice and talking about the teaching and um I just really uh appreciated this person's qualities and uh we ended up speaking for an hour or two about the teaching and I was asking him about what it is and what his experience of it was and you know, what Candice was like and these kinds of things. And he was so kind to share uh, with me. And then uh, my next opportunity, I went to one of the open meetings. So Candice was there at that time, luckily. And um, yeah, so as soon as she walked into the room, uh, something about the way she was completely confirmed the teaching for me, even though I didn't know much about the teaching yet. And um, I think that's in a way what I, what I had always looked out for is the actual uh, demonstration of the qualities I aspired to in a real person. And uh, I felt like if I ever meet somebody who demonstrates those qualities, uh, in a profound way, then 
then I will want to learn everything I can from that person. So everything in that sense came together when Kenneth walked into the room. And uh, yeah, I must have met you on the same day, <laughs> which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in fact, I remember that. I remember that day um, when you when you all came in. Um, well, that is, and and when was that, Sylvan? Uh, February two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. So you've had your tenth anniversary already. Yeah. Oh God, Sylvan, yeah. you're showered in Ten hearts. Like on the Facebook uh, video, <laughs> it's just like showering hearts uh, as you told that story there. So beautiful. And so you you said you were looking out, if I remember that correctly, for qualities. Um, and then you saw those. And and what are like, what were those qualities? What what were you What were you looking for? And maybe also how had you been looking for before meeting Candace and, and coming into this first open meeting after your new friend in the restaurant told you about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think freedom of mind or something like that would be something that I was very interested in like I, I think I was always kind of watching everybody around me to see how people dealt with life basically I was always really interested when I saw that somebody uh, wasn't um, perturbed by life and I found that attractive and and I really respected it and admired it and was deeply interested in learning uh what is that and how what is a person like that doing <laughs> differently to me because i i certainly didn't feel <laughs> imperturbable by the flow of life um and then also uh, another thing is like a, the capacity to benefit beings in a clear and uh, obvious way and uh, so both of those things were very evident in Candice when she walked into the room and um, yeah I think uh, you know I I had learned about various people who um, who apparently um, embodied these qualities and um, learned uh, as much as I could about them and their lives and uh, the teachings that they uh, taught to their students and the practices that they taught to their students and um, had uh, yeah, and also practiced uh, uh, meditation for four or five years uh, kind of a couple of hours a day kind of uh, practice and um, yeah. You practiced a couple hours a day yeah. <laughs> for five years. Yeah. Which is wow, that's like, that's determined, Sylvan. Yeah. It was pure determination because I didn't uh, I didn't particularly enjoy it uh, typically. And uh, um and, but it was great, you know, it's uh, it it was uh I feel like everything that happened prepared me for uh recognizing Candice and her qualities and also um quite easily um understanding a lot of the teaching because it because of the experience that I'd had with with meditating so it was it was really good but um the difference before and after was quite uh marked uh before and after meeting uh, the teaching and um, yeah, just the, I think the, yeah, what I said about determination, I think in a way that's quite a good way of explaining one of the differences is because I really felt like it was a, an arduous task, you know, to try to accomplish uh, or, um, 
bring about these qualities within myself and um uh you know f for myself if i didn't see obvious results which i never quite was sure if i saw any results um i just assumed well i must need to meditate more or more intensely uh, and so it, the whole thing for me had a quality of arduousness about it and uh like i was top and it didn't matter how i climbed a uh, peak so um yeah that was uh kind of the tone of my practice generally and uh yeah quite interesting to think back about that actually because <laughs> i certainly don't feel like that anymore so Oh, it's a blessing. Um, now, Sylvan, we're breaking up a little bit here. It could also be because we have a storm here um, okay. with rain and wind and uh, green tea for me. But uh, so if if you ever, if, if something should happen here, that's also for you, but also for everybody else watching, we'll do the best we can to stay on. But if something else happens, we will be sure to get back and to you on, on any next steps. So um anyway great thank you we we did get practically everything you were sharing um okay. and it sounds like a complete relief <laughs> um after years of like studying duty despite uncertainty of results but just really trying harder which is definitely something i know for myself um it, it was basically always my fault if things didn't work and if they did work it was god's grace or something like that but it's <laughs> it's it's like the you you basically never win um but uh so you you um then met candace now did you then stop meditating or or what 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 changed for you like what was it in that first meeting that made you come back ever since because you're still around after 10 and almost 11 years so um, how how did that then look for you in, in your daily life from there? I mean, you were in India, so I don't remember how much time you had left in India, but you obviously had a lot more time than probably most people who are watching us today will have um, in your day-to-day -day life. But, but how did that impact your day-to-day -day life and how did things click in for you? What did you do? How did you learn more about Candice's teaching and yeah? what happened um yeah so I, I must have been around for about three or four weeks after i met kenneth so that was obviously a very fortunate uh, circumstance because i could after that initial introduction i had you know there was teachings every day in rishikesh and so i was able to go to the open meetings um and um candace also recommended that I do the 12 empowerments, which I did with you. <clears throat> so I did that there as well, just uh, maybe a week after I met Candice for the first time. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, aside from, I think basically I just fell completely in love with Candice and, uh, I, you know, in a way, uh in a way there was nothing else needed uh because i just i didn't have to think about whether i wanted to come back or uh, i just came and and i knew that i wanted to uh learn about her teachings and uh do everything i could to master them to the best of my ability and um one thing that was lovely was you know that there was no suggestion that I needed to change anything. So I didn't, I didn't feel any kind of like, oh, now I need to stop meditating or something like that. Um, I just, I, I carried on for a few months and, uh, and just found that without particularly making a decision, I just kind of wasn't anymore, at least not in the traditional sense that most people think of. <laughs> Um, but it was interesting to see that since I did carry on meditating for a few months, 
my practice was so much more fluid and natural and unforced and um you know i think that was for a combination a combination of reasons like suddenly having support and, and suddenly having the support of a teacher which you know uh both yourself and candice wow it was, i i i really really wanted a teacher that was something i i knew and knowing that there is a, a person in the world that uh wishes the best for me in my practice and also has the ability to support me in that practice and clarify it for me and help me in really specific ways and understand as well <laughs> uh, was such a huge uh, influence and, and made a big difference for me and um but then just the unerring quality of the teaching uh, right from the beginning, being introduced to the fact that open intelligence already pervades all data and that uh, all of the qualities that I aspire to are innate and uh, natural. And um, the teaching is so unerring that it helped me feel safe with everything as it is increasingly safe which you know, which made my practice far more enjoyable I wasn't trying to get somewhere so much anymore and uh, that sense of not trying to get anywhere or not not feeling the need to engineer open intelligence has just increased ongoingly since the last 10 years so it's so wonderful <laughs> well that's that's amazing there were so many things in there we we should have made like bullet points like a <laughs> simultaneous powerpoint presentation of what you were sharing but i hope everybody everybody understood these and maybe we can we can untangle or 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 deepen some of some of these um aspects for you so one of the qualities that you felt um, confirmed through both Candice and also the teachings and the, and the environment that you were in was um, that, um, now uh, this may not have been your words, but that open intelligence is already naturally present. It, it, it isn't the destination. So was that basically what you were looking for before, like a state of, of open intelligence or how did that like, did you have an understanding of in your practice what it what it was exactly that you were looking for? Or how did that? How did you know that that it, that that was what you had been looking for? Did that question make sense? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, yeah, great. yeah, and that's an interesting question because I that was you know maybe another one of my predicaments was I wasn't really sure what I you know I knew that I was trying hard and. Uh, but, but I didn't really know how to, um, what criteria to use to really know whether I was progressing in, in the practice. I mean, I had some kind of an instinctive sense of it and, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, not knowing that it's naturally present, but also not really knowing what it was I was trying to do in the first place, you know, um, so but but the but the, you know the relief of the thing is is that because of because of the way Candice was and the authority that she speaks about the natural presence of open intelligence i instinctively knew deeply the truth of it even if i didn't have extensive experience of it myself just because of the genuine authority that I could see she has that was very much what she demonstrated as well. So I, I, so that gave me immediately a lot of confidence that I could just allow everything to be as it is and that that is uh, 
that nothing else, just full stop, <laughs> allow everything to be as it is, and th and that then uh, what I was aspiring to, even though I didn't completely know what it was, was then becoming more and more obvious as being naturally present. Mm, that makes that makes perfect sense. So, in a way, you. If, if 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 I look at that from from Candace, uh, may, maybe some of you all watching us today here don't know that, but Candace has basically researched this topic for by now, let's see, more than fifty years, uh, and like examined different practices and compared them by their result. And so, obviously, Candace has thought deeply about the results, as you you know that. And, and having clearly defined results is one of the criteria. Like, do people actually know what they're doing? And that's one of the things that I found really amazing too, is with, with, especially with the 12 empowerments, having studied psychology and then going into the 12 empowerments, uh, being introduced obviously also to open intelligence directly and seeing its immediate presence as me, not as a future goal, but that it's naturally present as what's looking was completely amazing. But then to have this map of these are the results and they're already naturally present within you. But it's it's actually very clear and very clearly directly confirmed. It isn't pointed out as something distant in the future that I would get at some point, but it is completely confirmed. Like somebody for the first time holding a mirror up and for the first time, I see a very different reflection in that mirror. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I see that I am the mirror. <laughs> so that was, I, I can completely relate and have, I think, maybe due to also having really tried hard and very, what was the word you used, arduously, um, diligently really tried everything I could um, to basically be the best I could be. Well, time is really progressing quickly here. Um, so nice to hear all of this from you. Thank you for speaking so openly about your experience. Um, what I so also much. always think is nice for people to hear is like, what, what were some of the actual, I mean, for somebody with your disposition, understanding all this and having the direct experience, I'm sure is an amazing actual practical result because you had been interested in this topic anyway, like in the in the pinnacle of being human. But I'd also love to hear if you saw any other like immediate impact results in your life, either in relationship to your day-to-day -day life with you know the things we go through as we live life in relation with yourself or also in relationship with, with other people or in your own capacity to demonstrate the qualities that you had observed in your teacher? Any, this is a very broad question, but anything that comes to your mind, we'd, we'd, we'd love to hear. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, one, one uh, big thing for me was my physical health which was uh, just, you know, incidentally, uh, the body I have <laughs> was kind of, um, uh, you know, I was very ill basically growing up in hospital every year. Um, I think when I was 19 was the first year I had lived without being in hospital. And uh, amazingly, you know, my health now is is the, in the last few years is the best it's ever been, and and I'm and very healthy and doing well, um, which I feel lucky about because I it's kind of like having the opportunity to experience both both sides of the coin. But in any case, when I first met you and first met Candice, it was still very much um, uh, I f I felt an urgency due to my health. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I didn't, at the time, it didn't seem certain that uh, 
what would happen with my health. Um, and so it gave me um, a strong imperative uh, in my practice. And I was very, um, concerned with wanting to master it as well as I can while I have the opportunity, so to speak. And um, so I remember speaking to you about about my health many times, 20, you know, and, and uh, you know, when I think about that, just the, the kindness of that, uh, this is one of the examples, having a teacher was such a new thing to me uh and that that kindness that you showed me to support me with that and it's like every conversation we had brought about uh, a little leap for me or a little breakthrough uh where i could i found that i could trust open intelligence just a little bit more and uh live with my condition without suffering from it and um, within a year, you know, about a year after I met Candice, I was actually in Rishikesh again. And, uh, you know, there was a big change in, in that, in my relationship with my illness. And it was also, like I was saying, related to the, the fear of dying before I have the opportunity to, to deepen my, my practice. So this was, it was kind of like a cloud following me around, you know, the, the, not just the pain and the discomfort and the symptoms, but the, the projections and the fears and the hopes was, was uh, occupying my attention a lot uh, during that time. And uh, yeah, so, you know, within a year, uh, I, f I, ha I found that I, was willing to rely on open intelligence with without hesitation in re, in relation to my health and uh my goodness it was it was quite a massive relief for me and who knows maybe that also contributed to my health getting better correctly i'm not really sure but in any case that was one of the initially that was one of the major changes for me was being able to be unwell so to speak uh without it impeding on my uh ultimate wellness in in uh, open intelligence and you know obviously i've learned more and more about that with time but uh yeah that was a massive thing for me yeah thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sylvan, I have the fondest memory of this time. <laughs> and it really is also <clears throat> from, and you're a teacher now yourself, a balanced view trainer. So you know this, but um, in hindsight, I'm sure that you can see that your openness also makes the role of a teacher really easy. You know, it may be involved in, in terms of, you know, speaking about these kinds of things or being in touch about them, but it is so much fun when there is openness to speak with somebody because you can always see the immediate results in, and, uh, and it's, it's very confirming, not just for the student, but also for the teacher. So I feel that's one of the things I totally love about the four mainstays in, in balanced view is that I'm never done being a student as mm -hmm. much as I, as I contribute and grow, um, in that capacity, I also feel like I'm, I'm, I'm learning from all the interactions that I feel like really genuinely honored and, and privileged to have with everybody. So in, in this case, I really feel that you're, you've demonstrated your openness with all, even before meeting Candace, basically, you've, you've shown yourself that openness and that diligence and that determination. And then there is this old saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And it seems that in your case, this really had, has come about. It, uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, so that's, that's really beautiful. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm glad. And of course, it's beautiful that also your health has, has improved to, to the extent that it has and that you can today live the life that you have benefiting many people through your qualities and activities. So that's, that's beautiful. I, I don't know. This is like a massive jump now from 2000. <laughs> that must have been 2008 to 2017. But like how <laughs> can, can we do a time lapse um, in, in like a few minutes? What, what is, is, is there anything today that you want to share about your practice? What is your, what has your practice been you know over this decade of your life which is when you hear it like this it sounds like it's a substantial amount of time um and what is it like today in your day-to-day -day life and um are there any recommendations that you would like to make to people who are interested in exploring the balanced view training from that perspective of your own experience with it in the last 10, 10 and something years. Hmm. No, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I think, um, uh, I mean, like I keep saying that having a teacher is for me very, uh, important and uh something that i really wanted and once i had it i felt like i, I want to make the most of it basically <laughs> not like i want to get something from somebody but you know what i mean it's such a wonderful opportunity that um that is not necessarily a given for for people who want a teacher um and uh but uh, you know, thankfully, you know, in 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 balanced view, if if somebody resonates with the teaching and wants to explore it and uh, and uh, de uh, deepen the experience of the the benefits of the teaching, then uh, it's so wonderful that people can have a teacher. I, I just find that so. It's such a simple thing, but uh, very important in my experience. And um, yeah, so I, I, I think doing the 12 empowerments was very key and uh, kind of set me up, if you like, with a kind of a foundation of understanding and direct experience of, of how suffering arises and how suffering is resolved and uh, that reifying data gives rise to suffering and uh, relying on open intelligence helps see through the illusion of suffering. And um, so the empowerments gave me like a, a good base understanding and the initial kind of uh, in increasingly clear experience of it, which, which meant that I then knew how to practice in relation to all of my life. Uh, I maybe wasn't confident yet, but I, but I knew how, how to practice, if you like, I knew what to do to the best of my ability, whatever that was, just allow everything to be as it is for short moments. And, um, so yeah, since then I basically just take every opportunity to be uh, with uh, with Candice, you know, and and with the, with you and with the community and and with the teaching. And I've lived, you know, I'm lucky, you know, I, I have the freedom in my life. I hadn't made any like commitments to anything <laughs> because you know, really wasn't interested in it in anything. Um, so that was quite a good. Uh, build up but I already had the space of my entire life to fill with this teaching um so once I found it I filled it with it and uh so yeah I, I just think looking back that um the yeah, doing the 12 empowerments was extremely key and um and then simply remaining open 
and continuing to expose myself to the teaching and and that's all I've done really uh, and it's amazing how the teaching is very transmissive so it's not really anything to understand nothing clever to do or achieve or nothing no particular special thing to do or to realize but just uh, just being in the atmosphere of the teaching with openness and then and then the results just come and uh, may, maybe gradually or probably gradually usually gradually um, but that's perfect so yeah just uh, I think that's what I've done and that's what I think the main recommendation I would have is to expose to yourself to the teaching and and to just remain open and that's it don't make any effort or don't worry about it don't <laughs> force anything just <laughs> plop yourself in the situation and and, and enjoy yeah <laughs> wow that's so beautiful um yeah i love that i love the metaphor of just basking in the sun and having nothing more to do, just like in like a person who has nothing more to do, basking in the sun, um, and just having that like felt sense of warm, cozy contentment and relaxation, and uh, and knowing that that can pervade every single day of of our life, whether it's easeful and relaxed or strenuous tasks that we might have to do in everyday life so it's beautiful and you so brightly shine with these qualities so it was just completely precious to see you here today sylvan we were at the end of our time here um thank you everyone for for joining in and thank you sylvan so much for sharing so openly it was brilliant to see you today oh, thank you so much Jochen. thank you everybody Great. See you again soon, friends, and uh, happy days to everybody. Bye, everyone.